Child Protective Services is going to be after me for the hot wire. <laughs> Sorry, oh. baby. Oh, you okay? Roger Ingerland. Following up from season two of the podcast, we were in the were we in the middle of a drought, or were we on the front were we on the front end or the back end of a record drought when you came into the podcast? What? The, I'm trying to remember the date of that, but I, I'm thinking we were into it, just starting into it with a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of wonderment about what was going to happen, and then it turned out it followed through and turned out to be pretty dry. Turned out to be pretty dry. How's it looking today? Today is May 27, 2022. Well, you know, I think it's really spotty around the state from what I can gather and actually around the whole region, but um, And for us here, we've been pretty fortunate. We've been pretty we've had a fair amount of showers We're north of Big Timber about 15 miles And we've had a fair amount of showers. It stayed cold and we've increased our snowpack in the crazies uh, Substantially in the past two months So uh, stream flow really hasn't come out yet because it's been cold nights that kind of stuff, but it's uh, I guess we're better than a lot of places from what I gather, uh, from what I'm hearing from people. There's a lot of areas that are still darn dry. So when you were on the podcast, you said you had eight months of forage ahead of you. Is that right? That sounds about right. Yeah, we, we would have been... So I'm trying to think what date that was, but that would have, that could have very easily and been that, the case. And that's when guys were already feeding hay. I right, believe. yeah, that could... So that was just last fall. Yeah. Yeah, no, that'd be right. That would be right. Um, so that would have been, say, October I, or November, I think, of yeah. 2021, probably. And we, that would have been right because we've gone through the winter on our stockpile feed. Um, and now we're calving and still on stockpile feed. That's growing as, as we speak, you know. We're probably down to a month or six weeks of stockpile feed of us now before we have to go back on something that's that's starting to well not necessarily go back on something but before we'll start into pastures that that we had grazed last summer so are you doing a, a forage assessment right now to to get an idea of what your carrying capacity is going to be through the summer a little bit um but it's really really difficult right now because we're our growing season is just getting started good and if we get good moisture it can it can make a hundred percent difference in how much forage we grow pretty easily so um but we've only we'll know in the next 60 days uh, on the on the dry land stuff for sure we'll know in 60 days and then on irrigated ground we'll we so far we're going to have early irrigation water at least so we'll be able to pretty predictably grow that forage and, and, and graze it um, but the, you know the nice thing for us we still have a month to six week window before we have to worry about that which puts us 45 days into a kind of a 60 day growing season if you will well how do, how do you plan for that I mean what's what's the program being structured there that you're gonna be you said you're gonna be 45 days into the grazing season before right. you do a pasture assessment? And well, we're, we're, we're monitoring it as it goes, and it's tied to, to the precipitation, of course. But um, yeah, until our growing season is pretty well complete, to actually do a hard inventory um, it is really difficult. Because you could, you could estimate 300 pounds an acre and it could grow 600, or, or you could estimate 450 pounds an acre and it might actually grow 200. And so in that case, I don't know how you you know I mean you could you could establish a real low baseline but I think we should budget a little bit above our low baseline just a little as far as our as far as our what we're counting on because we just don't know how it's gonna grow how much frost we're gonna have and how late we're gonna have frost and all those things um, so it's, it's really difficult but I can tell you that with leaving you know if you're leaving some sort of even an irrigated ground if you're leaving this kind of residue you're way ahead you know, um, and that's, you, like this fence line right here, where we left some pretty good stubble and residue, the amount of growth here from across that fence, it, it's double the, the, the growth. And 
basically this extra leaf surface here, we got twice the solar panel here. As we do a twice the amount of forage for a dog to roll in. That's right, that's true. <laughs> that's right. Just in case you're wondering, Bobby is okay. The, the electric fence might have knocked her down, but she's a ranch girl. <laughs> she's gonna have to be tough. Thank you.